Hello and welcome back here to the channel. I'm Evil Rabbit. We are staring down the starting grid of OSW with round two in the books of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. We are here in the ESDA R35 to run OSW to see what we can do in it. What an event it actually was. Make sure you guys follow me on all social media, all of which are found in the description box below. So before we get to running the ESDA R35 here on the track, we have a little bit of an opening here for today. So Heatwave, if you guys don't know, sponsored a bunch of main drivers in FD. So we do have a pair of Heatwaves that I wear all the time. These are my normal sunglasses that I wear all the time. But today, we got a special box from Heatwave themselves. So we're going to take a look at that here before we get going because it involves my sim so we got our special box from heatwave we're gonna take a look at what's inside of this and uh they're a bit of a custom so super excited about these big thank you to heatwave for the custom glasses they're definitely very awesome so of course we have the very beautiful heatwave box that they come in and uh of course the most important part about anything that you get you know the sticker you know the heatwave stickers I have a few of them now. This is definitely a one I don't have, so this is pretty cool. It's kind of like what's on Matfield's rear, you know, taillight. So we got the heat wave sticker. We're going to put that aside. So what I have in this box is something for me and sim racing. So this is a custom pair of heat waves that I had sent to me. So we're going to take a look at what's inside of this box that heat wave has sent me. And we have a nice pouch that is like on my sunglasses that I wear, you know, heat wave racing. So I spent a lot of time on my computer. I spent a lot of time doing things, obviously creating content and things, eye fatigue and everything is a very big thing and headaches. So blue light blocking is definitely a big thing. So in this bag, we have a custom pair of heat wave blue light lenses that we have ordered specifically for me for gaming and things like that. But it gets even better. So not only are these things, you know, blue light blocking lenses, clear frames, it's the arms. We have Neochrome Heatwave metal arms, which go perfectly to match my Neochrome NRG Innovations wheel. So these are definitely very awesome. Super excited to have a specific pair of Heatwaves with a Neochrome to match my Neochrome steering wheel to be wearing when I'm on my computer because I do a lot of work on my computer obviously with content creation and things like that so eye fatigue and headaches are something that happen a lot so now we have two beautiful pairs of heat waves that we have for our normal day to day as well as when I'm on the computer the blue light lenses is supposed to help with obviously fatigue and eyes and things of that nature so definitely excited to have these now for my sim racing and sim and creation and things of that so enough of these we're going to put these things on and we're going to go full send on this r35 and see what we can do here at osw so uh yeah we're going to get these things put on and we're going to go full send so there is a definitely a difference that i'm noticing with just putting them on the coloring of my monitor and everything are slightly different so it's definitely a bit of a change and I can tell so we're gonna see you know in the longevity period of time in the next you know time see how much difference it actually makes in my eyes you know blue light lenses and everything like that are something that are supposed to help with fatigue and headaches and things which I've been getting recently spending a lot of time on the PC so we're warming up our tires of our car get up to that optimal PSI and we're gonna go try full send here at OSW in the R35 ESDA from Connor with our livery I'm gonna try to run a mid to high angle we're only 80% boost can't really see where I'm going a little bit of tap of the brakes kind of screwed me up on that down the hill over the jump really wide and okay so we need to do a little bit of tweaking, probably the suspension, to get where we need to be in this car. I don't think I have a... I do not have a hood view set. So we're going to go test the hood view. We're going to put the car into a, a roof view, if you would say, and see if we can run the course in a roof view. Because I've been going back and forth contemplating if I want to run the course in 
obviously first VR or roof view a lot of people are starting to use roof view when it comes to competition so we're gonna adjust ourselves to a roof view and then run the course again and see what we can do you know this car being a target top is very different with you know where the roof view sits but I feel like that's a pretty good pretty good view and we will have I'll try and save this but I don't have the data unlocked so we will have the apex and everything still working in our favor because the apex does work because we just moved the cockpit view so let's go full send and see what we can do in roof view Don't know how close I am to that wall, but we're coming off the bank, slamming hard down. Transitioning to the power alley. I feel like that was a bit of a slow down there. I'm not sure if we're in the crease. We're going to take a look at third person view. We'll take a look at the replay on that because I feel like that was a pretty decent run, but I feel like we probably could have done way better. So we're going to check this run out in its entirety and see kind of where we are in digressing. We're just going for seat time in this car, trying to get everything dialed with this car and more and more seat time because we need that's the key. So we were pretty high on the bank. We kind of stayed on the bank a little long. Weren't really great on that clip. Through the power ladder, we were okay in this. Uh, I guess we didn't go as wide as I thought. A little bit of bobble. We did go higher than the yellow line, definitely towards the end of that run. So that was one thing we did exceed that inner crease so we would have to work on placement of the car now still learning how wide the car is and how long the car is is definitely gonna play a factor into how the car is gonna react where I want to put it so Connor definitely a very dialed car I did it with a very basic setup that I'm running when we were testing on another track and it seems to be working pretty well don't want to left foot brake too much just a tap there Came off the bank a, a lot sooner through the power alley, managing that jump. Uh, we, I thought we were going to loop that. We're way off that line this time. So that was definitely not the cleanest run. So we're going to go back into third and try and run it again. Things that I'm just trying to get used to. As much seat time as I can with this car is definitely important. Seat time and just constant driving on different tracks if you don't know what the track is yet for round two so we're waiting for that release oh, that's my tire on the wall come off the bank on a clutch kick would have punted that clip through the power alley managing the jump we came on to this this a little late but not too terrible. I'm trying to think. We are at 80% boost. So we'll try and knock it down to 70 and see if we can't. Oh, well, our tires are pretty much done. We need to reset our tires there. So we're going to go for another run on a different boost power. Because that's one thing that I did notice and was told by Addy about changing boost to having too much power, losing speed actually with too much wheel spin. So things I'm learning with doing this ESDA prep and things of that nature is definitely very different. So we're going to try 70% boost, dial the boost down a little bit. Quick flick to angle. Kind of high, much more flat foot. Don't know if the power coming off the bank was correct. Managing that bump, getting into the zone where we needed to though. Ah, but coming off a little bit towards the end. So 70 is good, but it's not enough I feel when we come off the bank. Now this tune is, like I said, a tune that we have established when we were running at uh, Daytona course so this tune isn't fully dialed for this track we're just running that bass tune to see what we kind of are at because we don't want to do a full tune on this track yet until we know if this is where we're going to be going 80% boost nice and high on the wall really angled up towards the end of that but it definitely punts at that clip 
but getting into the crease earlier than the zone and staying in it in its entirety is definitely way better. That run on that latter part of the course was way better than the other one. So we're going to run one more run here in the car, but we're going to switch it up back to the roof view. And see if we can't do this again and see if we can't run the wall and run that crease in Roof view, because roof view is a lot of the view that a lot of competitors are starting to use. <clears throat> <clears throat> roof view is a view a lot of people are starting to use. That would have been a strike one in Jared DeAnda's West. Strike one! But, you know, we can't hit the cones. So, unfortunately, perception is a little bit different when you are using, you know, this view. And that's why I'm also going to be testing in VR and things like that to see where I need to really be to be most comfortable and be most competitive because you know that's the whole purpose of this is to be most competitive as I can and run some solid runs here we go it's R35 screaming on the bank here angled up off of it I say I always float it way too far out there and I think it's because of not knowing where I am in the power alley as much as when I'm in different views. So we're going to try it one more time because I really would like to get that power alley down pat in this view. Because, like I said, a lot of people I know, I tend Maddie and a lot of the other guys, run hood view in tandem because it's very good to see where you are in chase. But not knowing how big this car is, like, right there's a wall tap. I could feel that. And there... And then that just threw me way off in this power alley. So a lot of work left to do and a lot of tuning left to do in this car. So make sure you guys follow me. We're going to be doing a lot of work with this ESDA car in the later videos as well as practice with Tandem and things like that. So make sure you follow me on all social media. Watch your the description box below. As always, I thank you guys for coming back and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys on the track.